honor First Lady, amen, the officers and members of this ministry, amen, to those of our fellowship that are not with us on today, God bless you, we are praying with you for your speedy return, amen, and to those of you who join us via social media and on our radio broadcast, God bless you, we thank you for giving us affording us another opportunity to be a blessing to you on this morning. Amen. Our declaration, amen, before we start, we want to always confess this because it is a absolute truth. This is my Bible. I must strive to be obedient to all herein. For then I shall richly enjoy every promise it makes. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And having your Bibles, if you would join me this morning, we're in Matthew yet again. Somebody told me a couple Sundays ago, Pastor, you spend a lot of time in Matthew. Amen. But there's so much meat, not only here, but across the word. Amen. Uh, this morning we will read in your hearing Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 16. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. And if you have it, you'll find there these words. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearing and certainly more over the doers of his word. Amen. If I could just reason with you this morning from a thought, I'd like to do so from this one. You are indeed responsible for how others respond. Amen. I'm going to give that to you again. It, it, long topic alert. Amen. You are indeed responsible for how others respond. Amen. In the day's time in which we live, there are, amen, no shortages of things that the devil has cause us to believe and adopt as truths. Amen. One of the major things that is, and and I know we have all said it, I have myself said it, because we have become prone to it, and, and the devil has somehow tricked us into the belief of it. And many times we say, huh, well, I ain't responsible for how you respond. You, you're responsible for your own actions. I, I'm not responsible for how you respond. However, I, I have a problem believing that that could be true if this is the words of our Lord and Savior. If he is saying to us that we must allow our light to shine in such a way that people see what we do and have a particular response, anything that as is adverse to that such a response says that we are thereby yet responsible for whatever comes from the action. Oh, y'all, you need to work with me this morning. I'm going somewhere. But the devil has convinced us that we only have to adhere reactionally. We, we, in other words, we are ultra responsive to that which happens afterwards, but not to the initial issue. Think about it. When something happens, you judge the end result. You don't think to what may have happened to cause that. You just deal with what has happened. We have become such reactionary people because the devil has convinced us there's no need to look at the action. 
and, and the response is solely on the person who did it. But I, I want you to think about this. Most of you are football fans. How many times have you seen an action happen? Somebody hit a player and then the other player that responds gets the flag. And then you look at it on slow motion and you say, well, yeah, I, I see them do what they did, but I would have done that too. But it is the person who acted last or responded who got the flag. But Christ is saying to us here that there has to be some sense of responsibility for our actions. We, we understand that to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, but somehow we don't allow ourselves to operate in drilling down to the action because we have become a people that says and, and have justified our actions by saying, well, I, I, I know I may have did that, but that's not what I intended, and they were wrong for responding the way they did. But God is saying to us that we have to check our own actions and not deal with the response. In other words, he is also saying to us that whatever our actions are, they should not cause people to respond illly. They should not cause people to respond in any other way than to give God glory. But we have come become a people who are so self-serving. When we do something, we want credit for it. When we do something, we want to stand up before people and have an accolade of, of hand claps and, and thanks and cards and, 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 and acknowledgments and so on and so forth. We're not doing things anymore to where God can be glorified. And, and I want to point out something here very closely to you. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And I think sometimes we get into a place to where we ominously accept the word on our own terms. What he is not saying here is just be morally good and people are going to glorify God because you need to understand that Christ comes back later and identifies the true definition of good. He says there is none good other than God. So when he says your good works, he's not talking about your ability to morality and morality do good. He's talking about your, your ability to operate in the obedience of righteousness. In other words, when you convey and operate in the words of in the way of Christ, it's to call somebody to glorify God. If you look at everything that Christ did, after he did it, the person walked away glorifying God. But every now and again, we do something and we want to poke our chest out. Yeah, look at what I did. I prayed for them and they recovered. Oh, because of what I did, God moved. No, God moved because God is good. And if you're going to follow the ways of Christ, you got to get yourself out the way and do what is righteous so God can be glorified. But if we feel that there's no responsibility on our part to make people respond this way, and, and we question ourselves and say, well, why do people operate or, or, or act adversely to what I do? I'm trying to, with all my best intentions, do something right. Well, this is not the way Christ is telling you to do anything. He's not saying operate in your own goodness, which he has also said to us is nothing other than filthy rags. He's not saying do your absolute best. He is saying, learn of me so that you can operate like me. And if you're going to operate like me, you're going to do the Father's will so that he can get the glory. But if you're seeking your own glory, if you're seeking your own way, 
if you want to justify your own means to an end, if, if you want to say, well, I, I didn't mean no harm, well, if God was not glorified, what you meant has nothing to do with what has been said here, has nothing to do with what Christ has challenged us to. He has challenged us in the ability to learn what we need to do in a sense that will give God glory. But long as we are going to accept the lies of the enemy that says, well, I, I don't have to be responsible for what other people do. They got to be responsible for their own actions. Well, true as that may in a sense be, then you need to own up to your own actions. If what somebody does in response to you, you don't like. See, watch this. Sometimes we do things to people that we wouldn't even want done to ourselves, but we don't want people to act adversely to us doing it. How can these things be? If, the, if we're going to operate in the word of God, the word of God has already told us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. My mama used to have a saying, and I know I, I talk to y'all about my mama sayings all the time, but she used to say, Son, God did not say do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. You just do it first. But see, this is the way some of us think. Well, I hit you if I had a chance, but I don't want you to hit me back. So I hit you hard enough to where I knock you out. See, see some of us have that mentality. Long as we do it first and it's not done to us, we're fine. But once it's done to us, then we want to cry foul. Then we want to say, well, you shouldn't have done that. But if you are operating in a way, it says that that's how you want to be treated. If you are operating in a sinful way towards somebody, if you're operating in an uncommonly way towards somebody, once it returns to you, you can't turn around and say, well, I, that's not what I meant in me doing it. This is why we have to dial in our ways and ensure that they're the ways of Christ. Because it's only the ways of Christ that's going to allow people to get glory to God. This is the only way people are going to say, separate you from the goodness of God. Oh, watch this. Going back to the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler was asking for something of Christ, which he was very able to give him because this is also God in the flesh. But here is Christ saying, look, don't look at it as me as good because I'm in this flesh. I don't want you to see that goodness in my flesh. I need you to see that this is God's doing. I need you to see that this is only something God can do. So when God does it, you can give him glory. I don't need you trying to give me glory for something you think you saw me do. I don't need my works to look towards you as if I'm so good at doing them. I need you to understand that God deserves the glory for what I do good because what I do good only came from him. But we then become responsible for how people respond. Uh, well, preacher, the Bible says, render not evil for evil. But you got to understand, I tell people this all the time, nine-tenths of people that come to church ain't saved. The other one percent ain't delivered. So you have to understand that majority of the people that you deal with is still playing from the devil's playbook. So they're going to recompense you if you're doing evil, they're going to bring evil back to you because that's all they know, which is eye for eye, tooth for tooth. This is what God said in the word. He says, I know you have heard back in the day it's eye for eye, but I'm telling you to take the high road. But see, we don't want to take no high road because we don't want no one to get one over on us. We don't want to feel like we're somebody's doormat. We don't want to feel, but, but, but at the same time, this is not what God is asking you to do to begin with. God is not asking you to let somebody run all over top of you. Because, see, this is what the enemy 
wants to convince you into believing. Oh, well, if you do things God's way, people are going to run all over top of you. No, people are going to do what the enemy tells them they're supposed to do. How can they believe on somebody who they've never believed on? How can they do the ways of Christ when they're not introduced to the ways of Christ? How can they see the ways of Christ if you never show them the ways of Christ? So when he says, let your light shine, if we're going to allow the glory of God to come into us to shine, to be able to show the heathen that this is the way God wants us to operate, we can point to this word all we want. But if we cannot walk in a way that shows how Christ lived, then his life becomes a mute point. And so does his death. Because we're sitting here saying, well, I can do whatever I want as long as I can quote the scripture. I can do whatever I want. And, 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 and if you're saved, you should allow me to do whatever I want to do. No, I shouldn't allow you to do whatever you want to do. I should show you exactly what the word tells me to do. If the word says that I've had enough of your foolishness and your evil and have separated myself from it, that's what the word has commanded me to do. If I love you in spite of what you do, this is what the word has told me to do. If you have become my enemy and I still love you as you were my friend, this is what the word has commanded me to do. But what I do must give God glory. But with this being said, I need to give you the other side of this coin. Because everybody that you operate in a way of God before is not going to give God glory. But somebody has to be seeking to see the way of God first to acknowledge that the way of God has happened. Because see, watch this. One thing that we don't want to accept or understand is that even though the heathen is not interested in serving God, the heathen knows what they should expect from someone who says they're living for God. But at that same time, just because you operate in a godly way, they're not going to just instantly glorify God because they're not going to have any understanding for what you're doing. Watch this. Just in praise and worship, we heard Bishop Sapp say, praise confuses the enemy. If you're happy when you're supposed to be sad, that's not going to make somebody glorify God. That's going to confuse them as to why you're not sad when you should be sad. When you're proclaiming God to be a healer, when the doctor says there's nothing else that they can do, that is confusing to somebody who does not understand who God is. When you're saying that, yeah, this is my enemy, but I ain't going to let you talk nothing bad about him. It is what it is. We've got our own issues. When you, when you start talking in the way of God, the enemy is not going to understand this. They're going to be confused by it. But... We got to understand that in everything that we do, it has to get into a place to where we take responsibility for our actions. Yes, you might be confused by it, but how does God get glory out of something that you're not going to give him? God gets glory at the fact of your obedience. So even if the heathen does not turn around and give God glory, it sets a precedence and example before him that will lead to him. Giving, you, giving God glory. I'm just here to tell you today as I prepare to get out your way. We have to take some responsibility in the household of faith. We've got to get ourselves out of these foolish half-truths that the devil is enforcing on us. Because watch this. I want you to understand something about the enemy. The enemy will tell you the truth only for you to act a lie with it. He will take the truth and give it to you in a way that will make you operate in a lie. So he will say, well, you're not responsible for others' actions. And leaving the other part out, people are responsible for their own actions. Watch this. Let me prove to you what I just said. People are responsible for their own actions. That is the absolute truth. But here's how the devil 
will cause you to act in a lie with this. He will allow you to defend your evil actions and only look at the action that's coming back from the respondent. Now all of a sudden, that lie, that truth becomes an operated lie because that is the only person you hold responsible but not yourself. All actions have responsibility. Not just reactions, but more importantly, the action. So when we get to a place to where we understand and take responsibility for our actions, if what's coming back respondently is wrong, maybe you shouldn't look at how somebody responded. Maybe you should look at what you put out. Because you are responsible for how somebody responds to you. You're res you are if every action has an opposite and equal reaction, if somebody has hit you with something in word that has hurt your feelings, then the possibility lies that you have also hurt their feelings. We're, but we're walking around here letting the devil convince us that somebody owes us an apology for how they responded while we sit here tight-lipped and won't even say that we were wrong to begin with. Get over yourself, get out of yourself, and understand how to take some responsibility for what you do. Instead of checking the respondent as step one, once you check yourself, the word says if we but would just examine ourselves. What did I do to get this type of response from this person? It's easy to just say, well, they just did it this way. I, and that ain't what I meant, but this is how they took it. God taught me something some years ago, and I'm closing, I'm getting out your way. And God said to me, he said, son, he said, intention means absolutely nothing. Because you're convinced in your own heart that this is not what you intended. This is just how somebody took it. But you must be responsible for explaining your intent. If your intent is not explained, then it is worthless. I say to people all the time, one of the, one of the craziest things and one of the most evident things that I do and the thing that drives my wife crazy about me, not crazy in a good way, but the one thing if you asked her that she hates about my character is that I'm a person who shuts down when I become angry. And I tell people, I didn't understand it as a kid, but I'm my father's son. My mother used to tell me of times where my dad can walk around the house for months and not part his lips in your direction. If you didn't got on his nerves or you didn't made him feel some kind of way. But I've learned to be able to share my intent behind shutting down. De Deacon works with me. He can tell you. I'm just not this way just at home. I'm this way, period. There was a time in the company that we worked for that I worked for him. And he'd come around, and he, he would say this or that, and, and if we had an argument about something, I just, and, and Deacon could tell you, i turn, all right, I, okay, and i just walk off and have nothing else to say. But at the end of the day with that, I'm not just not speaking out of bitterness. I'm speaking because you have conveyed a place to where we can't reason together. We can't have a conversation. I'm trying to understand where you are, but you don't want to have any understanding where I am. And so this becomes now not my character. It becomes God's character. Because God says, well, as long as you want to do things your way, I'll wait till you're done and turn from your way, and want to see something different, then we can talk. And so when I try to explain my intent is, look, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with the person that I, I, I got in the issue with, but I understand how to stop, pause, and think when I become angry. Because I also understand that the word says an angry man deals foolishly. And so to not operate foolishly, sometimes you got to stop just like if you're on fire. You got to stop, drop, and roll. 
and I had to stop and say, well, wait a minute. What am I arguing about? What, what, what is not happening right here? It, it Maybe if I just, if, if somebody be quiet, it'll cause the other person to try to look at the whole scope that you're looking at. But see, again, at the end of the day, just because people don't like that doesn't mean that it's going to be a welcomed response. So when you stop talking, it's going to cause the other person to stop talking. When you indicate that you're mad and not talking, that person is going to indicate that they're mad and not talking to you. And now you, you have this opposite and equal reaction. But you can't sit here and say, well, they're mad at me because uh, uh, I, I ain't saying nothing to them. But you have to make your intent plain. I'm not speaking, not, I'm not in the place of not speaking to you because I don't like you. I'm in the place of not speaking to you because I don't want to offend you. I'm in the place of not speaking to you because I don't want to say something I can't take back. I don't want to do something I can't live down. So, 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 you have to be responsible in every action that you do because it's going to cause a response. But in that response, you have to say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm trying to communicate with you. But if we hold no responsibility for our actions, how can you, re how can you think to judge the reaction? We're quick to throw a flag on what somebody else does. But I promise you, there's something that you may have done to cause the reaction. And I just say to you, if you take nothing away from this, Christ said it, not me. So don't blame me. But he says, let your light shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works. Let me paraphrase this in a way that you can understand it. That they may see your righteous works. That they may see you act in only a way that you can point back to God's word and say, I do this because God's word tells me I have to. I have done this because this is the commandment from God for how I should live and what I should do in said situation. When you can point back your actions to that which is good and knowing the only thing that is good is God, then God is, you put God on the chopping block to either get the glory or take the blame. However they choose to do it. But they have to acknowledge God for your actions. And when you act in certain ways that always points back to the word, you're giving God glory because your acts have become his acts. His, your commandments have been obedient to what he's commanded. And this is how we understand our accountability and responsibility for how people respond. So you can either stay in the devil's lie that says everybody's responsible for their actions this is a truth, but how he's caused it to be a lie for you is you only see the actions wrong of everybody else and not yourself. Take responsibility for your own actions. I'm done. God bless you. I'm Apostle Samson, and I'd like to personally thank you for joining our broadcast this morning. We pray that something said in the broadcast spoke to your spirit. We again thank you, and hopefully next time you can come see us personally. But if not, maybe you can catch us again next week. But until then, may the Lord bless and keep you, and heaven continuously smile upon you. Stay blessed.